ChatGPT was just launched a few months ago, and there are already talks that ChatGPT could replace Google Search. This is certainly a possibility, as Microsoft plans to invest even more money into OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT, and integrate ChatGPT into their search engine Bing. Unsurprisingly, this got Google super worried, and they even called in their former boss to discuss how to deal with this threat. That's because as of right now, Google has over 90% market share in the search business. And if Microsoft were to be successful, they could finally beat Google at its own game. So in this video, I'll be discussing whether could ChatGPT potentially replace Google search. And if you are a Google investor, should you be worried? All right, let's start right now. Okay, in order to understand how ChatGPT could replace Google, let's first do a quick comparison between the two. Let's say I want to bake a cheesecake. ChatGPT will give me the full list of ingredients, then step-by-step -step guide on how to bake the cake. Meanwhile, Google be like, nah, here are a whole bunch of links, and I have to choose the ones that I prefer. Or if I want to plan a seven-day trip to Tokyo and include onsen in the trip, ChatGPT can easily do that. On the other hand, Google will show me other people's itineraries and I will have to do my own research. What about explaining why it rains? But explain it like I'm five. ChatGPT does it really well, while Google has to rely on someone else to give me the answer or help to generate a quick sort function in C Sharp. And again, ChatGPT is able to do that, while for Google, I will have to go through the results to find the answer. Not only that, ChatGPT is able to do a lot more things that Google can't, like writing a children's storybook, write a news article, replying to an email, summarizing essays, and the list just goes on and on. As you can see, ChatGPT is able to give you answers in a simple, easy to digest conversation, while Google is like a big library of information and you will have to search through the answers yourself. And because of that, it's not hard to imagine why when Microsoft wants to integrate ChatGPT into its Bing search engine, Google is starting to get worried. So could ChatGPT replace Google search? It depends. But why hasn't Google come up with their own AI chatbot? Surely, as the leader in the tech industry, Google would have already come up with something, right? As a matter of fact, yes. Google has tools that are similar to ChatGPT. One of the tools is called Lambda2, where you can have a conversation with it, much like what ChatGPT is capable of. It was so realistic that even a Google engineer who tried it out claimed that it was sentient and even possessed a soul, which is obviously a nonsense. Or is it? Also, last year, Google also revealed that they are working on Pathways Language Model, or PAM, which can solve complex world problems, answer questions, and even explain jokes. But wait, that's not all. There's also Flan, Gopher, Duplex, and many more AI projects that Google is working on. Quick pause, here's a short message from today's sponsor, Mumu Singapore. Right now, we are in the earnings season, and with Mumu, you can easily keep track of your favorite company's earnings. Here's how. In the app, go to Markets, Earnings Reports, you will be able to see all the upcoming earnings dates. If you want to find out more, you can tap on the stock, financial, and under earnings, you'll be able to see a quick breakdown of the latest result, earnings call, call transcript, and what do other people think about the result. So if you are interested, you can sign up using my link down below, deposit $2,700 or more, and you receive a free stock worth up to $200. Besides that, if you invest at least $100 into Mumu Cash Plus for 10 days or more, you will receive another $20 cash coupon. With that being said, let's get back to the video. So ChatGPT is not the only AI project out there. But why we haven't seen Google release anything like ChatGPT to the public yet? Two reasons. First, cost. According to some estimates, ChatGPT serves about 10 million queries per day and cost $3 million per month to run. Meanwhile, Google gets about 9 billion queries a day. And if they were to run a chatbot like ChatGPT, it would cost them about $985 billion a year to run. 
which is obviously way more than Google's $256 billion revenue. So if Google were to run ChatGPT, they would just give up boom and die. Okay, maybe Google could catch the queries to reduce the cost. But remember that ChatGPT is trained using data up to 2021, while Google has to constantly update itself with new data, which would mean that it would be expensive to keep retraining the chatbot whenever there's new data. And that's the first reason why we haven't seen a public chatbot by Google yet. Second reason, reputation. Even though ChatGPT is good at giving out answers, sometimes it can still give out wrong answers. Like when asked whether 99991 is a prime number or not, it will tell me that it's not a prime number. Then try to convince me that it's right. If you try hard enough, you can also convince it that it's wrong and your wife is always right and it will happily agree with your wife. That's because for ChatGPT, there's no source of truth and it can be misled to give wrong answers. Google knows that if they were to give out wrong information, ho ho, their reputation would be at risk and they could get sued until their pants drop. Ah. That's why they would rather give you the links instead of giving you the answers directly. Third reason, ad revenue. Right now, almost 80% of Google's revenue comes from ads, including Google search, network ads, and YouTube ads. And if you were to give answers directly as to what ChatGPT has done, it might be hard to earn anything from it. Though, depending on how you implement it, this may or may not be the case. That's because right now, Google is actually already doing something similar where they will give the answers in featured snippets. And it's argued that by giving users an answer quickly, it will actually boost users' engagement enough to offset ad revenue. But for ChatGPT, one possible use case is that when displaying the travel itinerary, for example, instead of just displaying text, ChatGPT could display buttons that let you click on and do stuff, like book hotels, buy plane tickets, and attraction tickets. That way, ChatGPT would be able to earn from ads. So here comes the question, can ChatGPT replace Google search? Not yet. First, answer quality. On Twitter, a user argued that the ChatGPT that we have right now is similar to Google search in its early days. Basically, in the past, Google would try to match your query to the text on the website. The more similar the match, the higher the rank. And that is what ChatGPT is doing right now. It just tries to give you the best answer based on what your question is. Yes, it can give you a lot of information, but the answers are not guaranteed to be a good match, nor useful, nor reliable. Google solved this problem with PageRank back in 1998, where they would return results based on the sites that are most linked to. Basically, the idea is that if more people link to a site, that means the site is more trusted or more reliable. Now, obviously, given enough time, we will eventually get to a place where chatbots can provide quality results, but it will require a fundamental change in how we train models like ChatGPT. Second, Google has a lot more data than ChatGPT, and they have broader resources to collect data. If you are not aware already, Google is collecting a ton of data from us. According to their privacy policy, they collect the content you create, upload or receive from others when using their services. They have access to your YouTube history, the emails in Gmail, the files in Google Drive, whatever you search in Google Search, where you went in Google Maps, what's a plan in Google Calendar, the Google Ads you click on, and so on. And no, incognito mode doesn't exactly work. As a result, Google is able to show you results that are relevant and good for you. Meanwhile, ChatGPT is only limited to the data that it is trained on. And again, that limits the quality of results that it can give. Though, Eric from Twitter argues that this may not be a big deal for ChatGPT. Take for example, maybe the user is looking for answers to questions like finding a mortgage or buying a car or getting divorced. You don't really need as much data as Google has in order to provide good results. After all, we will usually get our results within the first or second page. All we need is to get the best data from the experts in the domain or get it from readily available sources like podcasts, 
YouTube videos, TikToks, and Twitter accounts. That will give ChatGPT the upper hand that it needs to outperform Google. Or in short, it's not about who has the most data. It's about who has the highest quality of data. Okay, here are my thoughts. Microsoft is super determined to win this next AI revolution. They have lost the search engine war, lost the browser war, lost the mobile phones war, and recently, they seem to have given up on the metaverse. If they want to stay relevant, they would really need to win this. Though, right now, I don't really see how ChatGPT could challenge Google search yet because giving good reliable results may not be what ChatGPT is good at as of right now. But there are actually places where ChatGPT is good at. For example, it is good at writing codes and finding bugs. And Microsoft could put it in their coding software. Spoiler alert, they've already done that with the Copilot feature and the result is amazing. Besides that, Microsoft is also planning to integrate ChatGPT into all of Office 365 tools like Word, Outlook, Excel, and PowerPoint. And it will certainly improve efficiency and productivity. But as for ChatGPT in Bing, right now I'm still skeptical as to how it can beat Google search. But I guess we'll have to wait and see how it will turn out when Microsoft releases it later this year. Anyway, that's all for this video. Hopefully, you find it useful. Like, share, and subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday.